My name is Corey Gilmore. I'm Director of Data and Analytics at Penske Media Corporation. Um, PMC is a media and lifestyle company. We own a number of digital and print properties um, covering a wide spectrum of topics. Um, primarily focused entertainment and business news, but it also covers fashion, television, technology, celebrity news. We put on conferences and um, other events like that. We're about 1,000 employees, including freelancers, with 22 digital brands. Um, and last month, we had about 350 million page views across those digital brands. We use GA for our primary source of data from, for our web properties. Um, the data is used by different parts of our company. Executives will use it for forecasting. Our SEO team monitors overall performance to make sure that we're not being dinged by Google. We had a brand that was focused too much on e-commerce content and was dropped from Google News briefly, silently. Um, our audience development team focuses on partner, partner feeds and the performance of content coming from those syndication deals, traffic referrals from social networks. Um, the editorial team is very focused on just how their individual brand's doing, how Variety's content's doing, how Deadline's content is doing. Our product and engineering team relies on this data to just check their work to make sure that a new feature that's planned is working as planned. Um, if there's problems, we try and surface those that way. And our analytics team is fairly new, actually. Until recently, I was chief architect working, helping to lead the engineering team and generally solving problems as they came up. Um, and transitioning into analytics, trying to take ownership of that to build up some of our internal dashboards that we've got, make sure that the data is correct and meets the needs of everybody else within the company. Our project management team actually doesn't use it at all, but I thought I'd give them a little plug. We don't do much. Um, our existing monitoring tools are unfortunately fairly minimal. We do have some alerting within GA. Uh, we use the built-in rules. There's basic sanity checks within Tableau. And for better or worse, because of the size of our staff, we get a lot of reports from our editorial team. They notice something's wrong. They see it in the GA dashboard. They report it. And then we're able to, to delve into that. And the product team will dig, or the engineering team, we track back through changes in code and things like that. Um, this doesn't scale, though. We've had more and more issues that haven't been caught and have persisted and gone on for sometimes months at a time, um, affecting data. And that's sort of what led us to the anomaly detection. We have 12 GA accounts with 213, around 213 properties spread across them. And we needed a better way to get this data. Um, we didn't want to build something ourselves. We aren't really equipped and staffed to build something ourselves. And we didn't really know where to look. Um, there's certain indicators of things that, of problems we've seen in the past that we were able to focus on. But we needed more than that. We needed something that was intelligent. And we wanted a data-driven approach. And those are really the, the key factors that drove us to Anadot. Um, the biggest problem with GA is that it's passive. If you don't tell it what you're looking for, it doesn't give you any sort of alert out of it. If you don't say, alert me when page views drop, it won't tell you about that. Um, and with the number of properties that we have, that, that's just not a solution. One of the things, actually, that we're not doing right now, we're, we're not real time, um, not because of any piece of technology. Well, because of one piece, mainly GA, the exports that we get from Google Analytics are delayed. The more data, the more hits that you send within GA, the longer it takes. So we see latency anywhere from four to eight hours. Um, and there's no way around that. They've been promising shorter delivery times for several years. Uh, we're starting to supplement the GA data with data from other sources that we can get the key metrics that we need. Um, we aren't as good about looking for anomalies after a redesign as we should be, tracking things like page load, um, fluctuations in bounce rate, different sources, and then digging into the device OS and the platform. Our, is traffic from mobile different? Um, it's, at this point, fairly basic alerting, um, but it does help us get to the root cause much faster than we ordinarily would. Um, the alerting is critical for a handful of reasons. It, it points out when there have been developer errors. If a developer pushes something, these, again, these are all web properties, something with a JavaScript error that's affecting the ability of, that's causing GA, the tag, not to fire. Um, our freelancers are compensated. Many of them are compensated by page views and traffic and the number of posts they write. So if analytics is broken and there's a problem with reporting, that directly affects their livelihood. And we want to make sure to fix that as quickly as possible. 
We also use it for our A-B testing, and if something's going horribly wrong with one of the tests, we need to know as quickly as possible. Um, and then finally, breaking news, and this is one of the reasons we want to get to real time. The graph you see here is ordinary traffic, and then um, on August 12th, that's when Robin Williams, his death was announced, and we saw roughly a 100% increase immediately. Uh, it was one of the highest traffic days on WordPress.com VIP, where we host. GA does have built-in alerting, but it's not something that we can really use. There's the closest that they have to any kind of automated anomaly detection is their automatic alerting. Unfortunately, they're phasing that out. Um, it's not clear why. And you can create individual custom alerts, but this is just painful. Um, each individual rule, you can only have one condition, so you need to create one for when a bounce rate increases and another when a bounce rate decreases, and then apply that to views. And it's really painful. Um, all the accounts are grouped at the account level, and then the views are, or the groupings at the account level, and the, the views are lumped together. So if you have multiple views with the same name, then it's just impossible to tell what, what you're applying these to. It, it doesn't scale. Um, we needed more actionable alerts, too. We needed a way to not lose alerts in a flood of emails. Uh, GA sends out an email with basic information, the title, um, the profile, even though it's actually a view, and a date, and that's it. And there's no other information. Um, Anecdote's a bit more flexible. We can pipe it into Slack. There's some context with it. It tells you when an alert opens and closes, and there's some progress. But we need a way for alerts to be actionable, and we can treat them as individually, we can treat them as being processed and confirm that it is or is not an issue. When you're using GA with, with Anadot, um, out of the box, Google Analytics doesn't know what your content is, and it's your job to tell and keep it informed about that. So we include, we have a number of custom dimensions that we use to maintain that link between a hit in GA and a piece of content. Uh, we include author information, taxonomies, the post ID, the piece of content, so we can always get back to all of that in the future. Um, and as far as the anomaly reporting goes, the most important thing that we have are the content type. Is it a post, a gallery, a homepage? This helps us segment our site into the pieces that we care about and where we're likely to see problems. If you're using Google Analytics Premium, you want to make sure to enable BigQuery exports to get your data out into BigQuery where you can process it, you can run it through an ETL, and then send it to Anadot. Um, they are working on a connector for BigQuery that should be available at the end of the year, um, if not early next year. If you're on GA Standard, there's a Python script for collecting. I have not used that, but apparently that's available now, and you can ask. Um, and it should, once a day, put all of your data into Anadot for processing. The metrics that we send are fairly basic. Um, bounce rate, page load time, different page views, time on site, uh, several types of events. If it's a video play, the number of video plays per session. The goal is to be able to determine what the behavior of someone on the site is and, and what typical behavior looks like and what anomalous behavior is. Um, we do have a couple calculated metrics loyal user page view and session rate, and then new user rate as well. Loyal user is defined as anyone who's had five or more sessions in the last 30 days. So this is a little bit of processing that we do in BigQuery before we send it um, onto Anadot. And the new user page view rate is kind of a flattening of a dimension into a metric. Rather than just a one or zero for if it's a new user, we track how many page views we're getting from an individual user. This is what drove us to really looking for um, a solution for anomaly detection. This is a kind of a classic error. This is a mistake we've made a few times and finally had enough. Um, we were sending double page views on the front end. So as soon as you hit a website, we would send the page view to GA and then a fraction of a second later send another one. Um, editorially, people were happy. They look at one number, they see page views going up, they're very excited. Um, but they don't look at the other number where bounce rate plummets down to zero because everybody's staying for two page views. Um, in three days, there was a 45% increase in page views and about 145% decrease in bounce rate. Um, this, and this is a typical mistake for us, and it's unfortunately fairly easy to make. Um, just a few weeks ago, last month, we had a similar problem, and this time it was caught, um, and we did get some alerts about it. 
Same type of problem, we were double counting page views, but only in one part of the site, only on gallery pages. So it, this is where it's important to have that content type and be able to isolate pieces of your site. Um, anybody on certain sites with a certain version of the gallery plugin running would send a double page view, and you can see the bounce rate dropped until we were able to catch it and correct it a few days later. Um, so it's been really helpful, and if you are using GA, I don't have them shown here, but the annotations are helpful, and then you can indicate why that drop was there, just to close the loop when people are looking and see something like that. Another issue we've had recently was um, refer spam from a site called steep.tv. It's a website that is part of a malware browser plugin on Windows, and it, behind the scenes, unbeknownst to the user running it, will hit the home page of your site briefly with the refer set to steep.tv and then leave immediately. Um, again, this is something editorial likes. Your page views and your traffic goes way up. Your uniques go up. Um, the, there's only a tiny window where you actually see an anomaly triggered. And this is why it's really important to go beyond just email alerting and be able to, like, you need to pay attention and catch that, that one bit right there because that's the only alert you're going to get. You don't receive a report over time because what it sees now is the default behavior is this new window here that says we always get this many, this many referrers um, to our homepage. And there's a brief moment of uncertainty where the, um, just the, the confidence widens and then you can see, obviously, we, we caught it and corrected it and started blocking traffic from that refer. But this was during a period of troubleshooting the, the problem with Google News, and we discovered several other, other incidents. Uh, we, have, again, <laughs> we have a fairly fast-moving development team, and we do cause a number of different problems. Um, sending interactive versus non-interactive events in Google Analytics is problematic. If it's interactive, it will trigger a change in bounce rate, and your bounce rate will, again, drop like you've seen here. Um, this was more of a procedural thing. We did get a notice um, sort of at that point, and we caught it, we fixed it, we had a discussion, and made sure that in the future developers knew we, we documented that process. Um, these are the, the types of things that we wouldn't necessarily catch on our own because we're looking at too many properties, and when you zoom out, it's hard to see the fluctuations in bounce rate at the weekly or monthly level. Um, just recently, we had a, another surge in, um, in events. So that with every page view in GA, and you can also send an event that says, clicked on this, scrolled to this level. Um, for deadline, it was just overall the number of events went up from under 1,000 to nearly 30,000. And you can start to see that there's a little bit of a pattern. If you're looking on Android, there's a normal fluctuation there. It didn't spike quite as high. And then we noticed it was video plays. Um, and you can see it starts to make a little bit more sense. This was right after Deadline posted video of Trump's um, Hollywood star being defaced. So it, what looked like it might be potentially a problem turned out to just be a normal spike in traffic. And we were able to quickly get to the root cause because we're sending specific types of events that we care about. We're able to isolate by um, the device category and drill down quickly enough. There's a few things to just be cognizant of. Challenges might be a strong word when you're using Anadota. Um, the time zones are a big one. In BigQuery and Anadota, it's UTC, whereas your GA dashboard is going to be the local time, Pacific time or Eastern. Um, as a result, you'll see page views spread out over several days. Sometimes if it, something's published late at night, you'll see it um, split between two different days in the, the dashboard. Um, when you're trying to dig in and, and see what might have caused it and you're looking up your annotations, just something to be aware of, that it's not going to be a perfect one-to-one -one alignment. The, the latency is an issue, and, and that's one of the bigger problems with um, Google Analytics and the the big query export, having that, that delay and that latency really hurts us. Um, our ETL itself and the, the sort of enrichments that we add to the data, the, the custom metrics, um, that adds 
maybe 30 to 40 minutes to the processing time, but we're, we're very far from real time at this point. Um, on the positive side, with that delay, we've just slowed down. You can't go back. The first metric you send, you can't overwrite that one. That one's what's set in stone. Um, so it's allowed us to move a little bit more cautiously, I think, and spend some time. And versioning your data, just including a, a single um, flat point like that makes a difference. And I noticed in the earlier slides the same thing. Um, cardinality, you want to choose key dimensions. There's a thousand different variations of device OS, browser string. Um, what we do is we look at the past 60 days, we find the most popular ones, and everything else gets flattened and just dumped into an, an all others bucket so that we only see the device OS's we care about. Um, it needs a little bit of work. We're still seeing hits from the Nintendo Wii that we don't really care about and things like that, but you can get down to um, a smaller group and you're not flooding um, all of your data points. And touched on this earlier, but dimensions can be metrics. Sometimes it's better to take what would ordinarily be a dimension. Instead of showing just new users, you'd rather see the page views from new users so you can determine, we launched a new section of the site, are we getting more friction? Is it stickier for new users on mobile if that was the goal? Or new users in this part of the country? if we're targeting something, or if you're tying it with an ad campaign. We're, as I said, we're, we're just scratching the surface of what we really want to do. Um, we want to bring in, and we need to bring in more data sources. We don't have any of our financial information here. Things like DFP are important so that we can see as page views go up, impressions, ad impressions should also be going up. And if they deviate, then there's a serious problem, and we can start looking at that. If one of the problems we have on mobile a lot is hijacked pages where you load a page and it immediately bounces you to an app store. So if we notice a sudden decrease in bounce rate, uh, we can start looking at that, especially if not all of the ad units have loaded. Um, we don't right now monitor the sizes of our tables and how much data we're sending. So we're not alerting if there's a fluctuation. If we only send 1,000 rows versus a million rows, that should be actionable and we don't do that. Um, I was pointed to the count series function and then the service usage metric, which is actually how you're billed. So you can configure alerts within Anodot for Anodot. Um, and that's next for us as well. And obviously, as close as we can get to real time or near real time, if we can get this down to under five to 10 minutes, that's hugely important for us. Um, and then just reviewing the functions that are there. Um, going beyond the basics. Right now, we're not doing much. Our data scientist, until I switched roles, has been stretched kind of thin, doing things outside of his scope of comfort, working on data warehousing and things that he shouldn't be messing with. So having him just go through this and look at some of the other functions that are there, and if he sees something that he's missing, suggest it. And that goes for everybody also. If there's a function that you find would be useful for analyzing your data, I've been told you can suggest that and it might be included. 